Hello everyone. We are meeting after a long time. So I was a little busy with my other course of work. So I couldn't make a regular videos. So in today's session, let us start with artificial neural networks. Okay, so this is the first topic of uh, unit two. So here this artificial neural networks, it provides us a, a practical method for learning real value, discrete value, and vector valued functions from examples. So in the first unit, whatever examples we have discussed, so they are everything what we have worked with is a discrete value, right? So in the decision tree, we have also seen that if you have a categorical value, that also to be converted to a discrete value and then work with that. So now artificial neural networks have the capability to work with real valued data and also with the vector valued data along with the discrete valued data. So let us look into the details. Artificial neuron. So here you can see a biological neuron. So the idea of artificial neuron is derived from the biological neuron only. So this biological neuron, so this is part of our brain. All of you know this, right? So now inside the brain, here if you see, so this is the structure of a biological neuron. So here in the middle part, whatever circle is there so that we call as nucleus or nucleus and the remaining part whatever we have in this shape along with these dots and all so this we this is the cell body which can also be called as soma and here uh, we have axon so this part so this is our axon and here hairy like structure the small small tiny parts are there so these are our dendrites. So if you see the processing of this biological neuron, so these dendrites will receive the inputs. So the dendrites are receiving inputs from the stimuli and through this axon, it will be given to this nucleus. The nucleus will process it and again it will produce the output. The output will be passed on from the axon to the dendrites and here at the dendrites, the other neuron gets connected. Other uh, and dendrites of some other neurons will be there. So from this neuron, the signal will be passed on to the connecting neuron. So this is how a biological neuron works. So from the same inspiration, the artificial neuron is also derived. So now you can just see the similarity. Here these node kind of structures, whatever you are seeing. So these are the dendrites. So now here each node purpose is to receive an input. So here inputs we have given in the form of x1, x2, x3, so on. Like this, you can have any number of nodes. So now here, each node, whatever we have represented in this square box, you can also represent this with a circle, okay? So each node will give will receive an input from the stimulus. So this input can be either from other devices or from some other program, okay? So input will be received here. Now whatever inputs are received, so that will be added up with some weights. Let us number it from W1, W2, so on up to Wn, okay? So what is this weight? Okay, so that we will be discussing shortly. So now you are passing an input along with some weight. So, so for, for time being, let us think this as some priority or some value which is added to this x1 so then what will happen so inside the cell body we have soma right so this is the processing unit so here also we have a processing unit indicated with the summation and we also will have an activation function okay so here this is similar to the nucleus of the biological neuron and finally the output will be generated so this output can be given as an input to the next unit. So this whole thing, input along with this processing and output, this whole thing we call as a single unit. So like this, you can have any number of units depending upon the type of the problem that we are solving. Okay, so that we will be seeing in the next examples. So as of now, we just get the similarities between the biological neuron and the artificial neuron. Next, coming to 
what sort of problems can we solve with the help of this neural network. Examples such as instances which are represented by many attribute value pairs. Okay, for one attribute, you, you will have multiple values. So all sorts of that problems, which we have seen in the candidate elimination or the finders or the decision tree learning, various values we have for each attribute, right? Such kind of problems also can be solved similar to that. So one attribute, multiple values. And target function output can be a discrete value or a real value, or it could be a vector value. This we have discussed already. And the training examples may sometimes contain errors. Okay. Though it has errors, our neural network is robust enough to learn the data. Sometimes long training times are required. So to train the network, it takes long time. So because we start with some initial input, we have seen x1, x2, and then we have also seen the weights, right? So what is learning is adjustment of those weights. Those weights we will be taking randomly. So whenever you are adjusting those weights in order to get the correct output, that we call as train. Okay, sometimes depending upon the value that we pick, it will take longer time. Sometimes we may get the output accurately in a shorter time also. And fast evaluation can be done with the help of neural network learning because the, it is already trained. So whenever you give a new value, automatically it gives us the output in a shorter time. Next, the ability of humans to understand the learned target function is not important because Internal representation of how it is happening, what are, what are the inputs, what are the weights, how the adjustment is done, how it is processed, all this need not be understandable by the humans. Only thing that we see is what is the output it is producing, what is the input that we are giving, what is the output that we are getting. If you understand that much, that is enough. So all these sorts of problems can be solved with the help of neural networks. So now let us come to an example of a neural network so that is perceptron. So this is the basic unit of the neural network. So this is all, this can also be called as a linear threshold unit. Here, as you see in the diagram, perceptron is taking a vector of real valued inputs. Actually, here we are giving it as x1, x2, x and so on like this, right? Actual, it's representation. If you take it in the form of a vector, in mat matrices, we will be taking, right? x1, x2, so on up to xn. So this is the vector representation of the input. So this will be multiplied with the weight vector w1, w2, so on up to wn. And here we are taking one extra input also that is x0 whose value is always 1 and some initial weight also. So this we will be calling as bias value. Sometimes this bias value is required to stabilize a noisy system. So all, we, all the sometimes we prefer to take this bias value and sometimes we may not consider. So it depends upon the situation or the application. So now, here we have the summation function, right? So here this is expressed as sigma i is equals to 0 to n w i x n. If you expand this, what we will be getting? We get it w naught x naught plus w1 x1 plus w2 x2. So on up to w x x n. What we are doing, we are just doing a linear, linearly, we are just summing up the inputs multiplied with the weights. Okay. So only we are calling this as a linear unit. So what is meant by the term threshold? Okay. I will explain you this threshold. So this is what we are getting here at the summation. Okay. So some processing is happening. And this is passed on to an activation function. So here, 
the activation function that we are taking is a sign function. So this we are calling as activation function. So there are various activation functions for perceptron. We are taking sign function. You have sigmoid. You have various other functions as well. As of now, for the perceptron network, we are taking a sign. So what is the sign function will do is whatever output is generated by the sigmoid function will be given as an input to this. So now, how the output is generated is output is gen generated by the sign function. So what is the output? So if the summation value is equals to one, so here you can see wixi is greater than zero. So then the output of this sign function will be a one. Otherwise, it will be a minus one. Okay, minus one can be taken as false and plus one can be taken as true. And in some applications where you doesn't have a negative value, this we can treat also as zero. Either one or a zero. So one is for true, zero is for false. Okay, so so this is the threshold. What, what is the cutoff? So uh, some easy functions will be knowing. Uh, you see, students might be knowing what is threshold, what is cutoff, right? So some value. So here that value that it should cross is the WIXI value should be greater than zero. So then we are getting an output of one. Otherwise, we are getting an output of minus one or zero. So only we are calling this perceptron network as a linear threshold unit. Now let us see the representational power of perceptrons. So here you are seeing a hyperplane. This hyperplane can be expressed as W bar into X bar expressed as O. So here we are taking a hyperplane definition surface in n-dimensional space. So here you can see we have some positive points and negative points. So here you can see all these are negative points. Here we have all positive points. Okay, so negative means you got some false value or some minus values you got in the output. Positive means your WXI is greater than zero. So now using a single line, if I'm able to separate these positive points with the negative points. Yes, I'm able to separate with the help of a single line. So I call this as a linearly separable. In the other one, here you can see, so here I have a negative point, here I have a negative, here I have positive, here I have positive. So this is how my data is spread across. So now in order to separate this, can I use a single line? Uh, let me try. Okay, so if I plot like this, what is happening? Along with two minuses, this plus is also coming on one side of the line and one positive point is there on the other side of the line. Unlike this one, I'm not able to separate positive points with the negative points. So using a single line, I'm not able to separate this. So if I draw one more line, then it is possible. If I draw one more line like this, negative points are separated from the positive points. You can draw it either way also. But using a single line, I'm not able to do this. So hence, I say this is a non-linearly separable one. So what is the representational power of perceptrons is all the problems which are linearly separable can be solved with the help of perceptrons. Which are non-linearly separable cannot be solved with the help of perceptron. So that means with a single layer perceptron it is not possible. In the earlier diagram we have seen one unit right. So with that that we call as a single layer. So with the help of single layer perceptron we cannot solve non-linearly separable problems. So let us see the problems that a single layer perceptron can solve is uh, Boolean functions like and, or, nand, nor, all these are linearly separable. So if you observe the truth table of this, you will understand. So if you see, let us just take a hat at me. Somewhere let us take a one. Let us take a minus one. 
So now in the end, so zero and zero again it will give you a zero. Zero and one also will give you an output of zero itself. Again, one and zero also will give you an output of zero. Only one and one will give you a one. So that means only one positive point I will be getting only in the case of one and one. All other are negative. If I have zero zero, I will get the negative point. If I get one one, I get a negative point. If I have sorry. If I have a zero one, I get a negative point. If I have one zero, also I'm getting a negative point, right? Zero one also the output is zero only. So that means I have negative points here, I have positive point here. So using a single line, I am able to separate this. Okay. So similarly, you can verify for R, NAND, and NOR. So let us take the case of XR. So it is, if it is 0, 0, output is 0, 1, 0 is 1, 0, 1 is 1, 1, 1 is 0. So that means if only one bit is on, your output will be a 1. Let's try to represent these points. So 1, 1 is a negative point and uh, 0, 0 also is a negative point. This is our 0, 0, 1. This is also a negative one. A one zero is a positive one. Zero one is a positive one. So again, you can see with a single line, I'm not able to separate this. Using a single line, I cannot separate. So this is a non-linearly separable one. So what are the Boolean functions that can be represented with the help of single layer perceptron? Only and or NAND nor can be solved. So in the next video, we will be seeing the implementation of AND and OR using single layer perceptron. So if you have any doubts, please do post in the comment section. Thank you.